Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cup, I am Penge, and welcome back to Surviving the Aftermath, where thus far we have indeed been surviving the aftermath, which is a very good sign, and long may that survival continue. So welcome back to Happy Land. This is Happy Land before us, this is the Gate of Happy Land, that is the flag of Happy Land up there, and the Gate of Happy Land does not look as inviting as I kind of would like it to. It looks a little bit sort of standoffish, I'd like it to be a little bit more welcoming. Could we go out and scavenge some stickers, perhaps? Some great big kind of smiley face emoji stickers or some unicorns or something like that just to make it look a little bit happier because, you know, it looks a little bit kind of standoffish. But there we go. Never mind. Maybe we can do that at some later point. So let's go over there through the gate and let's go and have a look at Happy Land in all of its sort of glory, as much glory as you can have from a settlement in the apocalypse. So we've got ourselves some living areas. This is the better living area because it's got a nice sort of water view and then we've got some resource gathering type things this one here gathers metal i think this one here gathers plastics we've got ourselves a trapper up here to get ourselves another source of food coming in which is very welcome got a little field got a medical hut and you know it's all okay it's very basic it will do the job however we do have a bit of an issue inbound and in two days we're going to have a heat wave so this is our first catastrophe that we're going to have to deal with and the game will throw different catastrophes at us so the first one we have is a heat wave so if we have a look at this intense and oppressive heat taking over the area colonists are going to struggle to keep hydrated plants wither in the cracked soil oh good so colonists are going to drink double the normal amount we've got ourselves two of the little water wells now i don't know if they're going to dry up so we are building a water tower just in case. And um, crop yields on open fields suffer. We have one of those. We need to sort that out. And yes, it says build and fill water towers and stockpile food to survive. So that is currently priority number one. Make sure we can survive the first catastrophe that's going to hit us, which is a heat wave. So this is the water tower. We need to get this done. We need some more concrete. I think we are actually out there grabbing concrete. Yeah, we're grabbing concrete from here but we're not actually getting concrete from there right hang on let's focus on the concrete just there so in this circle now from the stockpile gathering there is only concrete for us to grab there's a large bit or a couple of small bits so we will get concrete in order to get that tower finished that's very very important we need that done right now because otherwise who knows what's going to happen when the heat wave hits i guess the wells dry up i don't really know i'm not entirely sure because otherwise why would it tell you to put a water tower if the wells are going to be there and we've got two wells so it sort of sounds promising enough and then we need to figure out what to do with this as well because this field is growing and the longer we leave it growing the more yield it's going to have so the more food it's going to have but of course when the heat wave starts the, the uh, harvest is going to be lower so we want to make sure that we make sure we leave it late in order to make sure we've got a lot of potatoes coming out but we don't want to leave it too late for then the potatoes to get all bothered in the heat and then dry out and die. So yeah, this is this is a tricky sort of thing. Uh, we also have a, uh, a specialist. We have a specialist out there. Um, I think we just bring her back for now. I think we bring her back. I don't think it's going to be very, very good for uh, poor Kate there, who is uh, currently a scavenger, but she is actually a scientist. Um, I don't think it's very good for her to be out and about in the middle of a heat wave. So uh, Kate, you come home absolutely just come home so now you're probably what down here oh there you are that's where she is so she's now stood here i do like the sheriff's badge i love the sheriff badge over her. so um so yeah what we'll do is we'll leave her here for now because i'm not entirely sure if it's a sensible thing to leave her out and about um she was going to here to grab jerky do we go and grab the last five bits of that is it worth it um once the heat wave has passed or do we go and explore one of these areas because we don't really know what's around us uh, that looks kind of grayer that looks more like a city area that looks urban you know there's sort of uh, little buildings and roofs and things like that oh there's a helicopter there's a crashed helicopter and then little trucks and things this looks more like where we are now so that just looks like sort of open sort of uh, foresty areas this looks more like grassland so there's uh, sort of more What's that sort of mountainous sort of like pine type trees? And that looks, does that look like where we are now? Yeah, that kind of looks like where we are now. So again, sort of a more sort of foresty kind of area. It might be worth heading up to here, into this area, to see what we can find here. Because we're after science now. We need to get some science stuff underway because there is the concept of science. There is a tech tree. 
But we've got no science points because we have to go and get them from the world map. So we need to explore new areas to find places to investigate to then get the science points. But you can do lots of exciting things. You can do some communal eating. So you can build cook houses. Or down here in production, you can get like energy production so we can make solar panels and colony stuff. Better houses. We can have shanties. So that gives us a better house for people to live in. And all that kind of stuff. Security. You can build storage, which I don't know quite what that's under security, but it's okay. But yeah, like a medical center and stuff like that. And then exploration. We can build a trade center which sounds very exciting. So bigger trade convoys turn up and they've got better deals and more exciting things. So I want a disaster forecast sounds brilliant. That sounds very useful as well. So we do want to make sure that we get out there and start doing some uh, science-y sort of gathering on the map. But first we've got to explore those areas. But even before that, we need to survive. We need to survive this whole heat wave shenanigans. So here we go. Right, what do we do with this? Time is ticking by. One day until that thing strikes um okay right let's get this up to 35 potatoes right okay harvest now go and harvest that right now and that water tower has got has it got 600 water in it oh my goodness me that water tower has a lot of water in it could somebody go and start harvesting the spuds ah right good we are harvesting potatoes this is marvelous news okay right so lots of harvesting going on um yep yeah, well done i don't know if you use a scythe to harvest potatoes not entirely sure that's the best tool for the job. Some sort of, some sort of like a, a hoe possibly would do, or you know, maybe like a little sort of a little trowel or something might be better. But okay, that's fine. Ah, right. Two colonists are fighting, and Penelope is infected. I think Penelope has gone into the medical hut, which is very good. Right, who is fighting? Come on, children, stop squabbling. Pushing through a circle of people, you notice two colonists brawling on the ground. They both stand upon your arrival and go into accusing each other. One apparently spent the entire day harassing the other, who finally snapped and threw the first punch. Uh, the both are now bruised and bleeding. Punish the instigator, punish the aggressor, give them medicine, or let them, let them as well, let them fight. I'm not going to give you medicine because we only have two. And that's, this is not a good use of it. Um, okay, now the other thing is, how do we punish them? What exactly happens? If we let them fight, they're going to get injured and they're probably going to use medicine anyway to go and get recovered. So these two seem bad. Right, so who said what then? One apparently spent the entire day harassing the other who finally snapped and threw the first punch. Okay, so the person that snapped was in the wrong. The other person was being an idiot. Let's be honest. One person harassing the other, winding them up to the point where they broke. But that's what that person wanted. The person who was doing the winding up and doing the harassing wanted the other person to snap. So it's going to have to be the aggressor. I'm going to have to punish the aggressor because they actually did do the punch. They committed the crime. You know, then maybe they should have walked away or whatever or come to me first. So, okay, we'll punish the aggressor. So let's see what happens. So you deem the one response who, who started responsible for the fight. Hang on. You deem the one who started responsible for the fight. If something as insignificant as that can get under their skin, there's no hope for surviving the proper hardships. Some of the crowd are displeased with your decision and blame the instigator instead. Oh, so now they're still injured. So they're both injured and we've lost a bit of happiness. Okay, so that was a lose-lose situation, wasn't it really? We couldn't win because some of the crowd will be on one side, some on the other, and we've got to pick a side, really. So, okay, so we've lost a little bit of happiness over here in Happy Land, <laughs> which is, that's not really great, is it? Right, and just before a heat wave is going to strike, we have injured people. Oh, marvellous. Well, this is great, isn't it? You fools. Could you not have waited until after the crippling heat wave? Right, you are grabbing potatoes. This is very, very encouraging. Right, is everybody grabbing other stuff? Grabbing berries from there, which is good. Grabbing concrete from up there, which is also marvellous. Um, you are grabbing stuff from that massive pile of metal. And you are grabbing stuff from this huge pile of plastic. Okay, right. That's good. It's raining. It's supposed to be a heat wave on its way. And it's raining. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> ah, there was a happy face. There was a happy face. Nora is happy. So maybe Nora has got over... Maybe Nora is involved in the fight and she's now no longer... Um, sort of uh, annoyed at the fight or something. Or maybe she was one of the spectators that was a bit frustrated with my decision and is now not too fussed. I don't really know. I'm not entirely sure. There is still somebody in there who is injured. Somebody is being treated. So right down to there. So it's just Grace. Oh, was Grace one of the people having a little fight? Grace. Um, hang on, aren't you the... Hang on, aren't you the doctor? Grace is the... <laughs> 
So Grace works in the medical tent, so she's treating herself, essentially. Okay, fine. Yeah, so Connor's Grace is injured. Um, can Grace... I assume Grace cannot treat herself. So we're going to have to put somebody else in to go and treat Grace. I think that's what we need to do. We need to put a second person in who can then treat Grace, because Grace can't treat herself. And now Grace is just doing something at the side of the tent. Grace, what are you doing? Just just get in there and get treated, for goodness sake. Right, you're idly. And I think Grace is now no longer injured. Okay, right, let's remove you from there. So, yeah, you do have a little concept of um, of uh, people management in these buildings. So this uh, medical tent can hold two people. So I guess you can either treat two patients at the same time or you treat one patient twice as quick. Not entirely sure. But the other buildings do have that as well. So you can put an extra person in the recycler and an extra... No, no don't, don't put extra people in nuclear waste. Extra person in the scrapper and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think the heat wave must be imminent. The heat wave must be absolutely imminent. We have a water tower with much water in it. Is that going to be okay? We've got quite a lot of food. Right, so there you go. So the potatoes are now gone. So we got rid of all those potatoes. So we do have ourselves 36 potatoes. 26 jerky, 9 fish, some mealworms, mm, <laughs> some venison, and only a few berries. I think we're, we've are we outlined this bush to go and get berries, but I think maybe everybody is too busy right now doing some other stuff. So yeah, everyone's just gathering materials and what have you. Okay, right. Let's move time on. Let's get to the heat wave. Oh, oh, everything is... Is it because it's becoming night time or is it because the heat wave is striking? Everything looks a little bit different. Um, oh, we can see the mountains in the background. Oh, that's quite nice. Little mountain type, uh, little mountain vistas going on. Okay, maybe it's just because it's getting to night time. I'm still a little bit nervous about this. So no days until the heat wave arrives. Okay, we've got an okay amount of food. We have a water tower. So hopefully that will be sufficient water. Um, yeah, we do have the um, trapper there who is just producing a slow but steady supply of meat, which is okay. That's better than nothing. It might be feeding themselves and some other people. So that's good. Um, and now it's raining. It's supposed to be a heat wave. <laughs> it's raining. Just save all the water. Somebody else grabbing some berries. Um, okay, right. Let's kick back then and wait until the heat wave arrives. Although, hang on, down the river, colonists want to go exploring. A group of colonists have gotten curious about a nearby river and want to see what it's like for travelling. They've managed to build a simple raft and are eager to test its floating capabilities and what they'd find alongside the riverbank. So, okay, so it, we're in the aftermath of an apocalypse and they're building little rafts and going up and down the river. Okay, I mean, yes. Okay, let, let's test the floating capabilities of a raft. After being away most of the day, the group returns with their boat full of various supplies. They stayed afloat most of the time and even came across an abandoned fishing cabin left untouched by other scavengers. Oh, so five planks. Yeah, that's always welcome. Five parts. Oh, so we've got five, like, nuts and bolts and things. Oh, that's quite good. Oh, that was well worth doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, good job. You want to go exploring again down the river? Oh, no, it's because it's paused. There we go. Right. So now we just need the heat wave. We need the heat wave to hit because I imagine everything becomes quite troublesome in a heat wave. So let's just see. You're still planting potatoes in that field. That is fine. We could have left that a bit later as well, couldn't we? We could have left that a tiny, tiny bit later and got ourselves some more potatoes out of it. Survivors are seeking shelter. Okay, right. Two adults, no children. They are bringing in, they're bringing potatoes, yay, and also some tools and some clothing. That is good. And then the, yeah, the specialist is Mike. He is also a scientist. So he's very, very good at research. He's better than the other person is. Um, he's also okay at attacking, I think. He's got quite a good attack value. Um, he's better at leadership. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember what the, uh, what Kate's exploration was. But he seems quite good. He seems good. Everybody loves Mike. Is it the moustache? It's the moustache, isn't it? Seemingly impenetrable by the catastrophes around him, Mike is able to retain his calm demeanour and infectious belly laughter at all times. This is the person that we need in Happy Land. We need you in Happy Land, Mike. Absolutely. But where he got his medical training, nobody knows. And Mike sidesteps the topic every time when asked. I'm not bothered. If he makes everyone laugh and he's quite good at science and he can heal people, then yes, absolutely. Come on in. Come on in, Mike. Where are you? So you're coming in down here. 
You've got... See, what does that mean over your head? What does that mean? You're dropping the tools off somewhere? Is that what that means? You're just going to drop the tools and resources off somewhere? Possibly that's what that means. Not entirely sure. Although that person seems to have taken some tools. That person took two tools rather than gave us two tools. Not entirely sure what's going on there. Okay, never mind. Right, okay, now we just need to move time on until the heat wave arrives. Which I thought, ah, right. I think the heat wave might have arrived. <laughs> my goodness. Oh, my word. Okay, right. So, uh, right, everything's gone orange. Uh, so everything is really, really horribly hot. And, um, and the screen has gone wibbly. We have a heat haze on everything. Okay, fine. I mean, well, I don't think we need that barrel burning anymore right now. I don't think we need that on at all. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Turn that off for now. Okay, so crops here growing very badly. Growing 3%. Probably not going to grow any more than that. Okay, right. Everything is bad. Uh, water use is doubled. So we're going to sort of... Uh, ah, we're absolutely, utterly even on water. We produce 24 and they are having 24 water. Okay, so one person must consume one lot of water because it's hot. They are consuming two lots of water. Okay, the heat wave is indeed upon us. Oh my goodness me, look at the, <laughs> look at the sky. Oh dear, right, okay, well here we go. Let's see if we can survive this. Is that first real test? I would say. It's our proper first test. Um, small concrete ruin is depleted up there. We've actually got quite a lot of concrete now. Let's go back to there. Let's move the work area back to there. So they might go and grab some planks and some concrete because we could do with a few more planks possibly. In fact, do you know what? Change it entirely. Go to there. Go to there. There are planks and a little bit of concrete there. So yeah, go and grab those because we've got 35 concrete. That's quite a lot. That is quite a lot. Okay, we've got two specialists. That is good. That's quite promising for exploring the world. I'm not entirely sure if the world has a heat wave going on. I don't really know. This bit doesn't look particularly toasty. Um, but yeah, I kind of feel like we should send them in the same direction. I feel like we should send them to the same place. Um, yeah, if we send them out now, do they suffer from anything? Do they suffer from it being a heat wave? Or is the heat wave very, very localised? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I don't really want to risk it. Right, pause time. Pause time. What else do we need to get constructed? We've got sufficient housing for everybody, but we are at our housing limit. We don't need any of those things right now, but at some point the car is going to fill up, so we could do with getting a warehouse. Uh, I mean, we could put that together. We could get ourselves a warehouse. We're all right for those. Um, a sawmill and a forester could be useful because rather than gathering the planks from piles of fallen down buildings, we can make our own from trees. And then a forester then obviously puts the trees back, so we've got ourselves a little sort of circle of forestry there. Um, yeah, tool shop and a tailor. They do make things. They make the tools. They make the clothes. That could be useful. Burial pit. I kind of feel like we should build one just to have one, <laughs> just in case. I don't know. And then, um, and then the gate is built, and then we've got decor. Oh, hang on. There's extra decor. Oh, look at this. We can have a, a roaring fire. That's what we need right now. A lovely roaring fire. We can have a fancy statue. We can have a fancy statue, a Pathfinder statue, for those who have lost, suffered and sacrificed so much while creating this new dawn for mankind. I wonder what that does. Does that make our colonist people happy? Does it make them joyous? It seems a bit of a waste of resources. 30 metal. Oh my goodness me. No, 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 no. We won't do that right now. Um, okay. How about then? We've got ourselves a fishing hut. We won't do another small field right now because that's going to be very, very silly. We, yeah, we could we could get a fishing hut in. I meant we've got a trapper. Did I say we had a fishing hut earlier? I meant we've got a trapper. We could get a fishing hut. That might be quite good. So we've got some extra people in now. So yeah, we can put it, we can put it here. And I assume it just generates the same amount of fish wherever it is so we could just put it there look it likes it being just there let's drop that in and get ourselves some more food we're okay for food but you know that's a you can never have enough food in these games it's all fine i imagine our food is going to be going off in this heat quite a lot potatoes will be fine 
the the jerky will be fine because that's kind of dried. The fish and the mealworms will be very unpleasant indeed. It's a heat wave, but it's also raining. So everybody, open anything you have that's like a box and then just let the rainwater pour into it and then just drink that, please. I mean, it might be a bit warm, but it's better than dying of thirst. They are working on the fishing hut. I think it must be nearly done. Is it nearly done? Yes, it is. It's almost complete. And you're... Oh, I thought you were going to clear off. I thought you were going to just leave it ever so slightly not quite finished. You know, there's yeah, maybe a few panels that you need to sort of screw on or whatever. But no, we now have a fishing hut. And you, just there, Nora, now work at the fishing hut. Okay, right, so we're going to get a little bit of fish coming in, which is very good. So we've got ourselves some fish coming in from there, and we've got ourselves some meat coming in from the trapper over there, which is very, very good. So we've got alternative sources of food. Um, the fields will obviously be fine when it's not in the middle of a heat wave, so they'll be quite useful as well. So in terms of food, we're okay, I think. In terms of water, we're okay. Obviously, now it's a little bit of a weird situation because it's very, very hot. So I think now we've got... We've got everything we you know, need to get by with the amount of people we have. So yeah, I think now we get a warehouse. Let's construct a warehouse for six planks, two plastic, six concrete. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Oh, hang on a minute. Right, pause time for a second. There's a mysterious wagon outside. Okay, that sounds intriguing. Uh, let's just pop that thing in. Um, let's turn it round. Can we put it next to the food store? Yeah, why not? Let's put our warehouse there. Okay, colonist. What are you going to talk about? Abandoned property. One of the colonists rushes toward you. He says that someone spotted an abandoned wagon not too far from here. It's covered with a tarp, so they couldn't tell what's inside. There are footprints around it, but no one could tell where they led. The colonists want to go search the wagon in case there's something valuable in it. Okay, search the wagon, but arm the colonists. It will cost us two planks. They're just going to go with planks. <laughs> Just whack them around the head with a bit of two before. Okay, so that's probably the most sensible option. We have 14 planks. We can always get more. Um, search the wagon if there is something inside, then, or some one inside, then, um, yeah, that might end up with our people being hurt. Or it's too dangerous. Nah, we've got to take every chance we can get. So, okay, right. Let me <laughs> let me get you two of the sturdier bits of wood. And then uh, if there is anything in there, you can just yeah, smack whatever it is on the head. So, yes, go and do that, please. Um, okay, we're looking at things at the bottom. It's not brilliant, but okay. A small group of colonists ventures out to search the wagon. It takes them a while, but eventually they return. The wagon was only carrying a small amount of supplies, but that's not the worst of it. It had been pushed through a radiated zone and a few colonists already showing the signs of radiation sickness. Oh, marvellous. So what do we have? We have um, two people that are sick, three clothing. That's not that bad. And eight junk. Okay. Where's junk on this thing? Whereabouts is junk on this on this thing here? Is junk one of these things? Okay, what do we do with junk? Because junk is not one of these things up here. So what on earth do we do with that? We've got components and electronics and fun fun boxes and clothes. We don't have junk. Um, okay, well, go and put the junk somewhere and we'll see what's going on. Oh, and I assume you, <laughs> I assume you have got, oh, oh, absolutely. You very much do have radiation poisoning because you're kind of glowing, which is going to be terrible. You try and go to sleep and you're lighting the room up. That's going to be quite annoying. Okay, so here we go. So there's going to be you coming into here. You're going to get treated. The other person may have to wait a while because, you know, there's, there's two ill people. And um, yeah, I think, I don't know if our doctor can only treat one at a time, but okay, right. So two irradiated people, which is lovely, and a heat wave. It, it's all marvellous. Just looking at the average happiness of Happy Land, people don't seem to be very happy. So people are boosted by the fact that they're well rested. So hooray, even in this heat, they're managing to have a lovely night's sleep. Um, some of them got radiation sickness. That is bringing the average happiness down. That's fine. That will go away. However, there is a fear of death. I mean, and again, it's completely understandable, given that you know, it's the apocalypse and we're in the middle of a horrific heat wave. Yes, the fear of death is probably quite justified, but come on, have some faith. You've got loads of water. You've got lots of food. It's all sort of fine, isn't it? You'll be fine. Come on, people of Happy Land, give us a smile. OK, so the truck only has in it some clothes and some medicine. That's it. That is all that's in the truck. And I think the truck is the truck slowly sort of deteriorating. It's on 20% health right now. I do wonder if the truck is falling apart. So maybe we do need to start moving some of these things around. Like, what's in here? 
Nothing exciting is in there. Where are we keeping our current other supply of clothes? Because there's two clothes there and two medicine, but there's no tools anywhere. So where have they gone? Ah, okay, right. So the warehouse is done. I wonder if the tools and things are being kept somewhere else. I wonder if you can keep tools in another building or what have you. So, um, yeah, they're definitely not in the truck. So we, we, are, we, ah, are we moving stuff over? Oh, no, they're putting things into here. I thought they might be starting to move stuff into the warehouse, but it does not seem to be the case. So where are we keeping all those other clothes then? We've got loads of clothes and we've got loads of tools. I'm not entirely sure where we're keeping them. And it's raining again. It's supposed to be a heat wave. What's going on? Oh, okay. The heat wave has passed. The heat wave has passed. And we have succeeded in dealing with our very, very first terrible event. Oh, that's very good. So our first catastrophe is done. Oh, that's very good. And do you know what? We came out okay. We've got loads of food left. And we've now got a decent supply of water. Plus... We've got a big old store of it just there in the water tower. So yeah, have we emptied this yet? If we empty this out then and start using our warehouse, I wonder what we can get from dismantling a truck. Like, what can we get from salvaging a truck? I'm not entirely sure. And I'm still not sure where all our things are. We've got loads of clothes and, and tools, and I don't know where they are on the map. I mean, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not too concerned because they're obviously registered up here. But I'd like to see them somewhere on the map and I don't know where they are. Also with the heat wave done we can now start sending out our superstar people again so our specialists can go and do some exploring. So what I'm thinking is Mike has just joined so let's get Mike to go and do a scavenging run you know to cut his teeth on this sort of thing. He's a bit green at the minute so he can go down here he can do the final scavenging run pick up those five bits of beef jerky whatever it is grab that and then take it back to base. So there we go he grabs that he brings it back. That's as far as he gets. And now Kate can go over here and have a look at what's in this area. Ah, right. So we have to stand adjacent to it. So that's going to cost, what, a couple of action points. Okay, so one action point to move. And then we're going to look in here. Now, I don't know how many action points it is to look in a place. But you have a little look round. Okay, so it costs four. Ah, we do have a museum. Oh, this is very good. So there's a little bit of defence in the museum. We will find some science points. There are no hazards and no danger. And we will find 351 research points. Oh, that sounds very good indeed. Um, okay, right. Well, let's wait for them to then get their action points back. I assume that's on a daily basis. I assume that when a day goes by, they get their action points topped back up. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure on that. I, you know, Maybe we'll find that out. We'll have to check, possibly. What do we want to do with 351 of them? Oh my goodness, that's loads. We could get two of these things. and We could get communal eating to get a cookhouse and advanced farming. We could have medium fields. But also, we could get communal living. We could get bigger houses. We get shanties and little tenement things. Oh no, what are we going to do with all these points? Oh, we're going to have so many exciting points. Oh, and I'm just going to absolutely dither around. I'm going to dither around trying to figure out exactly what I want to research. I mean, energy. Energy sounds quite a good thing. We might go for one of the top level ones. So go for communal eating, go for energy production one, and go for communal living. That might be the best thing that we can do to start with. I mean, yeah, eventually you want to get down here. Comfortable housing. Houses, two-story houses. What is couch potato? Theatres? <laughs> oh, that's what we use the, the entertainment box things for. Ah. Oh, okay, right. Knowledge, preservation, libraries, arenas. Okay, go and punch the pants out of somebody. Okay. And then, yeah, nice housing. Like a little memorial type thing. That sounds quite lovely to get. And then schools and things. So the kids get better educated. They get a permanent production bonus. Oh, that's very good. Oh, there's so many good things. Right, we need we need all of the stuff. We need all of the research, and we need it all right now, please. Ah, it's rabbit season, and some colonists would like to try a new trap. Okay, three colonists explained they've been working on a new kind of trap for hunting rabbits, and the group wants to set them outside the camp. The contraptions look functional, but letting the group venture far away from the colony is not without risk. Why do they have to go so far away? There must be rabbits all over the place. Do you know what? Yes, all right, go and do a thing. Having been gone a while, the group returns, each carrying two or three rabbits on their shoulders. It seems the traps work very well as long as there's enough rabbits running around. And that's brought back 13 venison. Does venison come from rabbits? No, venison doesn't come from rabbits. 
I'm fairly certain that that rabbit meat is rabbit meat and venison is something different. Hang on, right now I've got now I've got to go and look that up on the internet. Hang on, what exactly is venison? No, oh, okay, well there we go. So according to Wikipedia, venison originally meant the meat of a game animal, so that would work with the rabbits they've just caught, but now refers primarily to the meat of a deer or antelope. That's what I thought it was. But there we go. So originally it was any game animal, which I guess, yes, then works for the rabbit. Okay, fine. So yes, 13 venison, 13 old, <laughs> old definition of venison, but okie dokie. That is great. That is a big pile of essentially free food there. Just free food that we got from them just testing out traps, which is marvellous. I think we're going to throw in another field as well. Let's just pop another field in because they're free. They are entirely free. So we'll have this one of potatoes and we'll have another one of corn because why not? It makes no difference. We can just have a field of corn. That's absolutely fine. Field of potatoes. That is also good. And you know, it's a little bit of a mixture for the people who live here because yeah, they might get fed up of potatoes. So the fact they might have some nice corn to eat might be quite lovely. So let's wait for them to actually put this thing together. And then we will say right on here, put Put corn on there, please. Absolutely. So yeah, a little bit different. Right, that's finished. Ah, the specialists are ready. Okay. Right, you, my good sir, you can um, you can return to there. So that's absolutely fine. You go to there. And then maybe you can scout over... Where do you want you to go? Maybe just come down here. Just scout down... Oh, can you do that in one go? You can't do that in one go, can you? Yes, you can. Oh, good job. Stood on the mountain with a bit of a viewpoint. Okay, right, there's a little camping site down here. No danger. And there's 21 plastic. That's not as exciting as the lovely science. Okay, right, Kate, go there and grab us a load of stuff. Oh my goodness me. Oh, she has to bring it back in multiple goes. So the science points are a sort of a, a commodity that you need to move. It's not just things she goes and goes, hey, right, I've acquired 351, whatever it was, science points. She has to go and get stuff, whatever it is, stuff to the value of 200 science and then bring it back. Okay, right. That is intriguing. Right, I'm not so bothered about the um, the thing down there, whatever that stuff is. The, uh, the sort of, pla I said it was cloth, didn't I? The plastic. Um, so yeah, I'm not so bothered about that. Um, I would rather go and find somewhere else that's got sciencey stuff. So next time we might send him over there. She can keep on retrieving the sciencey stuff. But yeah, we'll send Mike... Happy, smiling, joyous Mike. We'll send him over here to this region just to see what's over there. And hopefully we can get some more science points. I think it might be worth getting a sawmill in. It might be worth getting a sawmill down just to get us some more planks. Because planks are the thing that we're running out of. We've got the least planks. Of all these other things, we're not going and grabbing as many planks. So uh, let's get ourselves a sawmill. Now, again, I don't know exactly how this works. I don't know if we can just go, right, there's a sawmill, and you chop everything down in that circle that we can see there, or if you can move the circle. I'm not entirely sure. So I think, why can't we put you there? Oh, uneven terrain. Oh, okay. Um, let's put you over here. And then if we can, because there's plenty of trees in that area, I imagine it's going to have a circle that we can move about. I hope it does. So if we put you over there, or could we put you up here? Oh, we could put you up here. That's a little bit nearer to the um, the resource uh, sort of uh, points there, the sort of the stockpile type things. Let's put you there. I'm a little bit wary of putting you on trees because I don't want to have to chop down any trees. Yeah, you know, I don't want to destroy any trees that you could then later chop down when you're built. But okay, right, we'll put you just there. Okay, get that in. That'd be quite good. Small concrete ruin depleted. Ah, right. Is that now done? Okay, right. What we might do is let's leave that for now. Let's leave that stockpile area empty so the people that would go to that can actually get on with doing some other stuff for now. So they can start shipping resources over to this thing. Then we can get the forester, not the forester, the um, the sawmill in. We probably do need a forester at some point, but there's plenty of trees right now. There are loads of trees. So yeah, we'll see how this works. When it's built, we'll see how it works. Does it have a movable kind of target zone work area thingamajig? Or do you just cut down the trees that are in your immediate vicinity? Okay, they've not quite finished the thing yet. Theo has injured himself. Okay, good. He's taken himself over to the medical thing. That is marvellous. And our specialists are ready to go and do something else. Right, okay, Mike. Um, go and have a peer through here instead, please. Go and have a little look around. See what's in there. Ah tools. 
that could be useful. So there's a mana factory. So a factory is just there. It's got tools in it. No hazards, no danger. I'm thinking that is going to be worth going to get our hands on because we only have two tools at the minute. So grabbing five extra tools is going to be very, very good indeed. So yeah, Mike, your job next time, head over to there. Meanwhile, Kate, come back this way. Give us the science. Give us the science points. We've got 200 science points. Oh, it is a joyous day. Okay, right. Can we run back that way? Is that as far as you can get? Yeah. Okay, so another trip. She can go to there, pick up science, come back. That might well be her done there. Okay, right. Where do we want to send her next? Uh, that looks... What is that? That looks horrendous. Th this is clearly an urban area. It's got a museum in it, so this was a city at some point. That just looks like a horrific, barren awful kind of wasteland. I mean, everything is all a little bit terrible. This has at least got some trees and some bits of water and stuff. This is kind of marshy looking. This just looks horrific. <laughs> what is this? Okay, right. Maybe we'll look over there. But yeah, we want to get science point stuff. And I imagine the mo it's a majority of those are going to come from urban areas. They're going to come from places which have valid sites to visit that are going to be of scientific interest, like a museum or some sort of government buildings that might have something in or, I don't know, universities or other kind of, you know, learning sort of buildings. Um, yeah, that doesn't look like it's going to have anything in it. <laughs> okay, fine. Right, so we need to carry on with that. Okay, now we have 200 science points. What do we want to spend them on? Oh, this is very good. I think communal eating has got to be one. Get a cookhouse. What does that do? It creates and distributes nutritious meals prepared from raw food ingredients. And it's a gathering place where they can come together and have a little chat. That sounds like a good thing. The meals will be better. So they'll be you know, fed for longer, I guess. And they can have a chat. So it's a good social thing. So I think let's research communal eating. And then in here, do we go for communal living for the tenements and the shanties and stuff? Do we go for energy production to get solar panels and wind turbines in right now? I mean, we could go for security. We could get general storage. That's a bit boring, actually. General storage is a little bit kind of dull. Um, or oh, we can't get those ones. OK, right. So it's a choice. Energy or communal living. I'm not so bothered about general storage right now. I'm not too fussed about that. What is hazmat engineering, however? Clearing heavily polluted soil. Ah, Oh, that allows you to clear the um, big piles of pollution that are around the place. If you have hazmat engineering. Oh, oh, that could be quite useful as well, because there's a lot of those things around. Oh, oh, choices. <laughs> right, hang on. I'm just going to go and do some dithering. OK, I think I've made a decision, although I'm probably going to change my mind several times. So energy production allows us to provide energy via the forms of solar panels and wind turbines. I don't think we need them right now. I don't think we have any buildings that need a source of power. So a solar panel and a wind turbine will be marvellous things. But right now, the electricity is just going to go nowhere. So the power is just going to be wasted. So I think right now, let's get ourselves communal living. So we can build shanties and tenements. So it even says here, getting people out of tents and into better housing takes planning. So um, tenements house several people in the same cramped up space. Shanties give more space per colonist but are more costly to build. However, they're still better than tents or emergency shelters and give better protection against radiation, which is very important. And also we can put down uh, some lovely bushes and flowers and things. Tiny white flowers, tiny pink flowers. So do you know what? Let's get that. Let's get communal living in. And I think the first thing that we might want to do is maybe look at people getting them out of these, getting them out of these emergency shelters and somewhere else. So, uh, uh, oh, we've got a logging camp. Where did we get that from? Did I miss that? Was that in Was that in food? Communal eating has, has produced a logging camp. Okay. Ah, the logging camp produces firewood, which cookhouses and some other buildings need to operate. Okay, so without the uh, without logging camp, the cookhouse isn't going to do anything. Okay, right. That's why they're linked together. OK, we'll get that at some other point. Right now, houses. So shanties seem the better option because they're a bit bigger, um, but they are a little bit smaller. They're less likely to reproduce in cramped shelter. So that's still a bit cramped. That can hold eight people. So it's an improvement over one of those, which holds six. But I kind of want them to have nicer things. Let's get let's get them in shanties. Let's have a few of these. So it's five planks and six concrete and eight metal. We can get two of these in right now. We can get two of these in 
right now. So let's do that. Let's have a little a little street. Can we have a street going down here? So not just there. Um, so I have one there. And then can we build another one, please? Right next to it. That would be marvellous. So um, yeah, we'll build it just there. And the road kind of comes through the middle. So we can have ourselves a little kind of road going through. In fact, you can build road bits. Hang on. Remove road or dirt road. Makes it easier for them to move around. Um, I mean, yeah, do we just want to go dirt road along here? No construction cost. Um, okay, hang on. What? Hang on. Let's just put a dirt road in front of those houses and just see what happens. Just go like that with a dirt road. What happens? What exactly happens when you try and build a dirt road? Or are you going to build that last? Which you probably are going to now. Um, okay, there is a small group at the gate. Hello, people at the gate. Oh, right. Well, we're building some more housing. So if you guys can come and help, that would be marvellous. Our last hope. The ragged bunch shuffles slowly toward the gate. Their clothes are torn and dirty with traces of dried blood. One of them pleads, Our caravan was torn to shreds by effing bandits. And we've got no place to go. I like the fact that you've put effing. That's good. <laughs> You're not potty mouths. That's fine. Could you please help us? We'll give every little bit we have left for some medicine or shelter. Okay. Welcome the group in and alert the medic. We get four extra colonists. So we are going to need those buildings constructed very quickly. We can't do that because we have not got three medicines. We can't tell them to have some medicine and then clear off. Or we can just ignore them. I can't ignore them. That I, I, We're all people. We're all together. We have to survive. So um, yeah, let's let's just let them all in. Okay, the group is frankly surprised by your offer. Having little words aside from thank you to say uh, they are advised. The medic immediately. They are advised. Advised, probably. Um, so three berries, three tools, four colonists. Okay, so they've got some tools. That's okay. And now we've got a load of new people who are... Um, oh, no, they've, they've sort of appeared in the thing. They didn't walk through. Okay, yes, and indeed... Four colonists are homeless. Build more shelters. We're actually, we're on it. It's absolutely fine. We're on it. I mean, if we get that finished, that will be useful because that will provide some planks. But but no, everything's kind of going quite busy right now. Um, let's see if we can get these people treated um, because there's two, two injured and somebody infected. Yay. Um, but the sawmill's done. So that's good. So the new people, one of them perhaps, can go and work in the sawmill. Although it seems to be you working the sawmill, Stella. Oh no, hang on. No, Stella's not that person. You're not Stella. You're only oh, no, your Nora. Okay, again, same character portrait. Little bit confusing, but okie doke, right? So now we have somebody working here. And yes, we can move the work area. So let's try and clear a bit of space over here, look. Let's try and clear that space just there. And then we can start building on this. We can put farms and things in. And I think we are going to leave it there. But we've done very well indeed. We survived our first catastrophe. We survived the heat wave. And do you know what? We made it look quite easy. The heat wave was an absolute doddle to get through. So that was good. We've got ourselves two specialists now. So we've got a couple of specialists that go and explore the map. One of them is picking up science points, which is marvellous. We've spent a few science points on some lovely things. We've got these houses in our looks. We've got these shanties in, which look brilliant. They look kind of like sort of mobile home type things. So we've got a couple of these in, so everybody has housing. And um, yeah, we've just been very, very nice and let some people in rather than just kick some people out and tell them to go away and that we never want to see them again and you know never darken our doors we let them in because we're happy land and that's what we do it's a happy place full of happy people and of course we've got other buildings going on we've got the little sort of uh, sawmill thing at the back we've got various other bits and bobs going on we've got the fisherman person in as well so yeah it's all looking very good here it's all looking very good uh, we do have some injured people specialists are ready to go next time and yes we shall see what happens with the specialists and if we can uh, get these people healed up next time when we come back but for now we shall finish up hopefully you are still enjoying this i think this is great i am having a lot of fun playing this i think this is very very good indeed hopefully you're enjoying it too if you are then please do leave a like that would be most marvelous and of course if you are not already then please do subscribe in order to keep up to date with how we get on here in surviving the aftermath but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i will see you next time this room was fire free until it wasn't Okay, yeah, come with me if you want to live, Paul. Hop on. Wee. <laughs> this is brilliant. That looks fun. Do some watery stuff. Yes, make the propane caster not explode. Uh, yeah, the toilet's on fire. Never mind. Oh dear, that didn't go according to plan. Never mind, it's fine. 